difficult choice between the easy and the right decision. Help us to choose the narrow path. We also pray for all who are about to set out on an adventurous journey of faith anywhere in the world. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 9 to 17. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now hear these words. Let your hands be strong so that the temple may be built. This is also what the prophets said who were present when the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord Almighty. Before that time, there were no wages for people or hire for animals. No one could go about their business safely because of their enemies, since I had turned everyone against their neighbor. But now I will not deal with the remnant of this people as I did in the past, declares the Lord Almighty. The seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, the ground will produce its crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. I will give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. Just as you, Judah, and Israel have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you, and you will be a blessing. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Just as I had determined to bring disaster on you and showed no pity when your ancestors angered me, says the Lord Almighty, so now I have determined to do good again to Jerusalem and Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things you are to do. Speak the truth to each other and render true and sound judgment in your courts do not plot evil against each other, and do not love to swear falsely. I hate all this, declares the Lord. So ends the reading. Our second reading for today comes to us from the Gospel according to Mark beginning at chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear now the word of the Lord. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on a path. And the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, If you have ears to hear, then hear. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, today is a big day in the life of the church. Here in this church, of course, but also throughout all of the Presbyterian Church USA and far beyond, as we gather together today to celebrate World Communion Sunday. 
And I have to admit that this is by far one of my favorite Sundays of the church calendar. As some of you know, maybe all of you, my parents were in town last week and we were telling Betty how our home church used to go all out for this day. We would celebrate the church by decorating the sanctuary with various cardboard people with different skin tones and different pipe cleaner hairstyles and different fashions from all across the world. It was such a fun and uplifting day and such a needed reminder that we are part of a wider faith community that includes all kinds of people from different races and cultures with different languages and food preferences and clothing styles, and even different religious practices. My father and I also laugh about these cardboard people um, because each and every year we would pull them from the craft room and they would be completely disheveled. Some missing their shirts, some with their pants down around their ankles, some with their hair falling out on the floor. We would inevitably be stapling and pinning their clothes back on and looking for new pipe cleaner hair in the 11th hour each and every year. So it's good to be gathered together today and not have to dress anyone in the front of the sanctuary. <laughs> Friends, today is also incredibly special because we have reached the climax and conclusion of the peace and global witness offering where we are able to help our neighbors who live here in our community, throughout our nation, and all across the world through the financial support of various peacemaking efforts. And so this truly is a day that is filled with so much goodness and generosity and love for all people. It's perhaps a little striking then that our Old Testament reading for today, which inspired this year's Peace and Global Witness campaign, does not begin in the most joyful, most uplifting place. Rather, our Old Testament reading for today takes us all the way back to the city of Jerusalem following the Babylonian exile. There we find some of the Jewish exiles working among the ruins, determined to rebuild the city, and even more importantly, the temple that had been destroyed decades before. It is there that we hear the voice of the prophet Zechariah reigning through and speaking on behalf of the Lord. He acknowledges how difficult life has been. The people are facing extreme poverty and few opportunities. They live with a lack of stability and security. And the thing that had motivated them most, the rebuilding of the temple where God dwelled, has slowed and even come to a complete halt. I'd imagine maybe you would too, that the newly returned exiles felt a sense of hopelessness and despair as the reality of their situation set in. Even more, I suspect that all of us here today can understand these feelings. After all, each one of us has lived through turbulent times, from wars to periods of civil unrest to the terror of September 11th and all the conflict and war that followed that devastating day. More recently, we have all lived through the COVID-19 pandemic and the closure of businesses, schools, churches, and pretty much everything else. Along with that, we lived through heightened political tensions and racial tensions and the emergence of protests and riots that polarized the nation. But then somewhere along the way, we watched as our nation began to rebuild. In some cases, there was the physical rebuilding of buildings 
that had been damaged or destroyed. But there was also this rebuilding of society with a new normal. And if you remember, it was pretty painful still. As a nation, we disagreed about what exactly this would look like and how long this new normal would last. And ultimately, all across the board, many of us felt exactly like the newly returned exiles that Zechariah was called to serve. We felt hopeless. We felt despair. And maybe some of us still do. But friends, we can hold fast to the good news. Even in the midst of hopelessness, the good news is still there. The Lord our God speaks and offers a word of hope. We find it in the pages of Zechariah when the Lord declares through the mouth of the prophet that the exiles will be dealt with differently from now on. No longer will there be disaster or wrath, for there will be a sowing of peace, one that will be fruitful and one that will multiply beyond their wildest imaginations, one that will allow them to be a blessing, not a curse. But the prophet makes it clear, this sowing of peace will not be without effort on the part of the people. Indeed, they are given some work to do. Namely, the newly returned exiles must work toward justice and truth within the gates of their city. That includes in their speech and in their public judgments and even in their very hearts. God wanted this newly restored community to be one that is steeped in justice and truth. And friends, I wonder what it might be like if we accepted this work as our work too. What would it be like if we took the theme of the peace and global witness offering seriously and attempted to sow the seeds of peace starting today? What would it be like if we fully committed ourselves to making our community, our nation, our world, a place where God's justice and truth reign? I kind of suspect it would be a lot like actually sowing seeds in a large field. Time consuming, difficult, sometimes dirty, maybe backbreaking. But I also hope and I suspect that we would see the fruits of our labor in our own lives and in the world around us. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Some of you might be a little bit skeptical, and I have to admit, so am I. After all, we have never lived in a world that was fully steeped in truth and justice. We pray for peace and reconciliation all the time. But again, we don't really know what that would look like because we have never experienced it before. It can be hard to imagine the world differently in the best of seasons, let alone in seasons like this, when we are coming up on the one year anniversary on the attack on Israel and we are faced with continuing escalation of war and conflict throughout the Middle East. When a hurricane leaves 200 plus people dead and many others displaced on our own East Coast. When there's an upcoming election that is sure to make tensions run high. When it feels like the whole world might just be falling apart. But friends, that is precisely why we need the good news of Jesus Christ. The truth is we cannot solve all of the world's ills on our own, whether as individuals or as a congregation or as a community or a nation. But the good news is we don't have to. 
Through Jesus Christ, God has already saved the world. But we can, we get to be participants in bringing God's kingdom into light, even in subtle and simple ways. Friends, we get to sow little seeds of peace as we go about our days, our weeks, our months, even our years on this earth. Friends, it is no accident that Jesus tells the parable of the sower to his disciples and all the others who were gathered around. There we watch as a farmer goes out of his way to plant seeds everywhere, from the path to the rocky ground, to the thorns, to the good soil, only for some of the seeds to spring up and produce grain, while the rest never produce anything at all. So it is with our efforts towards peace and justice. We can do our best each and every day, sowing seeds of peace as we go. Some will take root, others never will. And friends, that is okay. As Mother Teresa once said, God has not called us to be successful. God has called us to be faithful. And so we can go forth faithfully and gracefully, sowing seeds of peace still. We can go forth trusting that God has, is, and will do the rest. Friends, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. I will now invite you to stand, if you are able, for our responsive hymn, number 298, Lord, You Give the Great Commission, verses 1 through 4. Life heavenward, 
seated. Scripture reminds us, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. With gladness, let us present the offerings of our life and labor to the Lord our God. Thank you, John. If you could all please stand and join with me in the congregational response to the offering, hymn number 188, Jesus Loves Me, an Old Favorite. An Old Favorite. Yep. Jesus loves me. Join me in the operatory prayer. Blessed are you, God of all creation, 
Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Friends, this is the table to which Jesus invites us. Let us participate joyfully. God planted seeds now germinate, a tree of life, an orchard bearing fruit. Such is nature, abundant life budding. And Jesus sets the table, invites us to dine water into wine, land where bread is born, a people on the path of perfect communion. Friends, the Lord be with you. Also be Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please pray with me. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then, in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place, who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. In Jesus, born of Mary, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, broke bread with outcasts and sinners, and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and needy. Dying on the cross, he gave himself for the life of the world. Rising from the grave, he won for us victory over death. Seated at your right hand, he leads us to eternal life. We praise you that Christ now reigns with you in glory and will come again to make all things new. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Friends, great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. 
by your spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. In union with your church in heaven and on earth, we pray, O oh God, that you will fulfill your eternal purpose in us and in all the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give you thanks for this bread, fruit of the earth and hard work, a gift of the grace of God. We break it and share it, remembering the words and actions gestures and glances, silence and self-offered life of the teacher of Nazareth. And we give thanks for the fruit of the vine, for the joy of communion, for alliances that endure in the search for justice and wholeness. We take the cup, knowing we are part of a community people, renewed in its covenant with life. Friends, the gifts of God for you, the people of God. You may come forward.
Has everyone been served? And please join me in our unison prayer. Do we have a unison prayer? Well, then let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of bread and wine that we have participated in today. We pray that you might send us out into the world, use us to be your body for all people. This we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn. He's got the whole world in his hands. Hey, John, you want to come up and noodle for this one? This, this hymn is not in our hymn note, but I believe we all know it, and the words will be up there. It's a fun hymn. go in peace to love and serve our Lord. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.